Tall Tale TV. The Unextraordinary Day of the Bodger by Alexander D. Jones. In a world where everything seems to break continually, one man is on a mission to steady it all. Cain Abel is the Bodger. Cain stopped his dramatic trailer speech as he finished screwing in another bracket into the already quadruple-bracketed banister. Ah, oh, cheers, mate, said Al, walking into the room. Take a tenner. That's really helped me out, that has. Thanks, Al. I appreciate that, said Kane. You up for quiz night on Friday? Sure am, Al nodded. I'll see you then, then, replied Kane, as he left the house with his bulging toolbox in tow. Kane chucked his things into the boot of his van, slammed the door, and started to head home. His front door opened with a creak. Rats, said Kane to himself. WD-40, that's what I was meant to get. He slammed the door shut. The picture that had been blue tacked to the wall fell off and clattered onto the floor. And picture hooks, he muttered. He flung his shoes at the shoebox, but both missed by a few feet. Oh, and a bad miss from Abel there. The boss won't be too happy with that one, said Kane, narrating his life as ever. And now, here's Abel, lining up the dive. Here he goes. Kane ran into his living room and dived onto his sofa, snatching up the TV remote as he did so. And he sticks the landing. Ten out of ten from the judges, and the crowd goes wild. Kane mocked some fake cheering as he switched the TV on. Something about satellite launches was on. He flicked through to the sports channel. After several hours, he decided that enough was enough, and he went to bed. The next morning, Kane was woken by his phone. He rolled over and picked it up. The caller ID said, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith was the manager of a large warehouse uptown, and he often called Kane in to fix something or other. The weird thing was that he never actually remembered anything about his visits. Not that he minded. Smith was a fantastic tipper. Hello, Mr. Smith. How can I help you? Kane asked. Ah, Kane, came the voice from the other end of the phone. What's up, dude? Nothing much, you? Yeah, I'm cool, but we got a leak in the bathroom over here. Can you come and fix it? Sure thing. I can be there in half an hour. Cool, cool, man. I'll see you then. Bye. Mr. Smith hung up. Kane heaved himself out of bed and got himself ready. About half an hour later, Kane arrived at the warehouse. Pea packing plant, it said in big, bold letters. Kane unloaded his plumbing gear and headed toward the front entrance. He entered into a small reception area and went up to the counter. Katie was working there again. Hiya, Katie. Is Mr. Smith around? He asked her. Yes, I'll just go get him for you. Take a seat, Katie replied. As Kane sat down, Mr. Smith entered. He hadn't even touched the seat. He never did. My man, said Smith as he entered. Hey, said Kane. Another leaky pipe? Yes, sir. The third one this week. It's a problem. Mr. Smith gestured for Kane to follow. What kind of people use your toilets? asked Kane. <laughs> you have no idea, Smith said, as he led Kane down the corridor towards the body scanner. No idea. Kane was passed through the body scanner and his bag through the x-ray machine before he carried on. I still don't see the point of having the body scanner in a pea packing plant said Kane as he went through the first set of double doors. Something beeped as he went through. He thought nothing of it. But then he went through the second. Before his eyes was a massive expanse of desks and labs teeming with life. But not just human life. There were hundreds of aliens. Some tall, 
some short, some fat, some thin, some with two legs, some with twelve, some with one eye, some with nineteen. Cain stopped, stared, and stuttered. Yeah, said Smith. We have the body scanners, because this ain't no peepacking plant. Mr. Smith took Cain by the arm and led him along the metal platform that was above the warehouse floor. Cain walked open-mouthed, occasionally pointing and making inaudible sounds as he went. Smith led Cain down to the warehouse floor and diagonally moved towards the toilets. They entered as a large, furry creature with six legs and three eyes left. Sup, Weevil, said Smith. The creature let out a grunt in reply. They entered, and Cain stopped and scratched his head. He looked at Smith and stuttered a sound. Yeah, aliens. Cool, huh? said Smith. Uh, aliens? Cain ran his hand through his hair. Can you fix the pipe? asked Smith. The pipe? You've got an alien armada, and you're worried about a pipe? Cain waved his hands in frustration. I'll explain everything once you fix the pipe. Smith leaned up against a wall. Cain laughed and got out the tools he'd need. It only took him about fifteen minutes to fix the pipe. Right, said Cain. What the hell is going on here? Walk with me, said Smith, leaving the room. Cain packed up his things and hurried after Smith. They headed back up the metal staircase and onto the platform. It's okay, Kane. I'm sorry. You won't even remember all of this. Smith leaned on the banister. Oh, I hardly think I'm likely to forget all of this, mate, Kane said defiantly. Come on. Smith went through the double doors. Kane followed. As they went through the second set of doors, something bleeped again. I'm afraid you'll need to go through the scanner, Smith said. Kane frowned and put his bag on the conveyor belt. Kane walked through the scanner, and it flashed. And they said, What, this one? Smith laughed. Kane nodded confusedly. <laughs> yeah, what did? Kane drifted off. But, anyways, thanks for fixing that pipe. Smith got out his wallet and started counting banknotes. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, eh, fifty. You did a good job. Yeah, the pipe. Kane tried to think about the job he'd done. The room. Anything. He had no idea. Cheers, man. I appreciate you coming out so quickly. Smith handed Kane the money. Right, yeah. No worries. Uh, have a good one. Kane picked up his bag and headed to his van. He put his bag in and stood for a moment. He tried to remember what he'd done. He still hadn't a clue. He got into his van. Abel was at the front of the grid today, and they're off. Kane headed home. He opened his front door, and it creaked. WD-40! Alexander D. Jones is an author just starting out on his literary journey. This is one of his first publications. Alexander loves putting characters in situations that he would never end up in himself. He is currently working, very slowly, on his first novel. With luck, you should see his name on a shelf in your local bookstore in a couple of years. If you'd like to follow Alexander, you can find him on Twitter, at Jones of Jones, and on Instagram, at Snapshot Photographics. Thanks for listening. If you want to hear more stories like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and sign up for the weekly newsletter. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.